All right, guys, welcome to 6D. This is our anti-stressful foods list. You got carbs, fats, and proteins. We're gonna go over our top choices that you wanna make sure you're focusing on. So right into it, carbohydrates. We have raw honey and maple syrup. They're a very accessible and easy sugar to get into your daily nutritional habits. You can put this in anything from your milks to your yogurts to just having it plain. It's a very easy to digest sugar. And that's, you'll see a common theme on our carbohydrates is easy to digest sugars like fresh juice. So any fresh juice that you can find local to your area, orange juice, grapefruit juice, grape juice, grape juice, lemonade, anything fresh preferably. And always reference back to the uh, shopping intentionally and not habitually blog post. We go more into detail there. Fresh fruit, any in-season fruit local to your area. If you still have issues di digesting fruit, try to make sure you cook it maybe a little bit to pre-digest it for your stomach. Um, papayas are gonna be a great source of fresh fruit. Oranges, apples, grapes, any berries, any uh, citrus fruit. If you're, if you're having stuff, yeah, melons are another great source. If you're having like apples or pears, try to peel the skin off of it because they can contain a lot of wax and pesticides, herbicides, stuff you don't want. Number four, we have roots. So roots contain really any potatoes, sweet potatoes, red potatoes, white, yellow, russet, anything that you can get local preferably. Uh, is best. Again, peel them is preferred, so if you can peel them and boil them, that's how we recommend cooking them. And make sure you cook your potatoes well. Well cook them. Any undercooked potato uh, can be you know, just left undigested in the gut, leading farther down the path of creating endotoxin and more digestive issues. Fungal buildup. Yep. Actually a lot of fungal overgrowth from that. With roots, you also have like carrots and beets, bamboo shoots. We Highly, highly recommend carrots and bamboo shoots. Uh, they're an insoluble fiber. Insoluble means it's not, it's going to help kind of, it's not really going to break down like fiber, but the insoluble fiber helps pull out all this bad bacteria in your gut and in your intestines. So we always recommend a shredded carrot salad or bamboo shoots with some olive oil and some sea salt. Number six is going to be wild or white rice. Again, this is more on the bottom of the list. So focusing more on the easy to digest carbs more throughout your day and week. And still, if you wanna have your, your rice in there, have it a couple times a week. Don't overdo it with the white rice and the wild rice. Still very nutrient dense here in the wild rice. White rice, not so much. And number seven is gonna be sourdough bread. This is a, a great alternative to many breads people eat. Sourdough bread is already easy to digest. It's, especially if it's made a certain way and someone knows how to do it, how to make it properly, it can be very easy to digest. And you can still have your fun, you know, have your eggs, have your sourdough bread and some jelly, and maybe some fruit on the side is a great meal. Those are our top carb sources. Again, focus on easy to digest carbs is the goal in this program. And the other main thing, you guys, is all these carbs, they're very, they're actually non-existent with phytic acid, anti-minerals, anti-vitamins, anti-nutrients, right? And the sourdough bread, like he was saying, it's, it's not grown with yeast, it's actually fermented, and so it's a bacteria rather than a fungus, basically. And what happens is that breaks it down and then it makes it a lot easier to digest. That's what basically we were just talking about. Same thing with the white and wild rice, low phytic acid, brown rice has a very high phytic acid content. That's why white rice is very recommended because it doesn't have any of that. So moving to fats, we got grass-fed butter, any dairy that we recommend, it's always best to get grass-fed, preferably local, preferably raw, organic. That doesn't really mean much. It's really about grass-fed and local, and hopefully the animals are treated with low-stress conditions. Grass-fed butter. Next, we got pasture-raised eggs. Uh, pasture-raised means just they're outside eating normal foods that chickens would eat, which is in the ground, like grubs. If you ever own chickens, you'll notice that they actually eat grubs. They don't really eat a chicken feed. They don't prefer that. And the more they eat grubs, you actually see that the, uh, the yolks become a lot darker or deeper color, mm -hmm. more rich in nutrients. Coconut products, highly recommend. So that'd be your coconut creams, your whole coconuts, extra virgin coconuts are good, young Thai coconuts are good as well. 
Um, it does have a lot of fiber, so that's a good and a bad thing. It's a good fiber, but you know, just be careful you're not overdoing the fiber too much. Shredded coconut would be good. Uh, coconut butter, coconut mana is a good mm -hmm. brand. That's like a coconut cream with the, the meat as well. And then uh, obviously coconut oil, that's a good one too to cook with. But the saturated fat's much more stable at high heat temperatures mm -hmm. rather than like olive oil or something. So already, if you're cooking, you're gonna be using your grass-fed butter, grass-fed ghee, coconut oil, with the ghee's down here. Um, and then we got the tallow or oxtails and shanks. You know more about that than me. Yeah, so those, those are again, other parts of the animal that are anti-inflammatory. So the muscle meats are gonna be very inflammatory, your shanks, your oxtails. That's more beef tallow, that's something you could cook with. It's like a duck fat. But shanks and oxtails are great to incorporate into your nutritional habits because they're, again, they're anti-inflammatory amino acids like lysine, hydroxyproline, and beta alanine. They're great to use in your broths if you wanna cook broth or just have them boiled. It, it, it's, they, I think they taste great. Uh, we, not up here is beef tongue. That's also another good source of, of protein and fat. And you'll see common themes with the fats and proteins. Many of these are similar because most of the anti-inflammatory proteins we recommend are going to contain some fat. Mm -hmm. uh, number five, you got dark chocolate. Again, this is something not to indulge in every single day, but if you feel like you want some chocolate, try to get it dark and try to avoid the dark chocolates that have soy ingredients or any chocolate soy in general. Soy lecithin, yeah. sunflower lecithin. And always reference back to that ingredient sheet because a lot of the chocolates can have all those extra crap ingredients that we talked about. Yep. And number six, you got olives, avocados. Again, more down on the list. There are gonna be, like Nick said, your monounsaturated fats. Olive oil is more of a omega-9, it's a, it's a meat acid which is preferable over your polyunsaturated fats, of course. Olives are great, avocado. Again, if you're gonna use these as far as oils, try to use them raw. We always recommend using them raw. Don't cook with them. Put them on like your shredded carrot salad and uh, you'll, you'll be good from there. Yep, and obviously last one was ghee. That's what we talked about. You can actually get the ghee. I've seen tallow in the grocery stores. If you don't have access to a farm, that's ideal. Obviously, it's a lot cheaper too. You got the coconut oil that's in uh, grocery store grass-fed butter. The best you can do is they do have grass-fed butter at grocery stores, but you will notice if you go to a local farm, it's going to be a lot deeper color. Mm -hmm. It's just a complete different experience. So ideally, sourcing is key, and we do with what you got. Yeah, and again, going back to the sourcing food guide on our blog post, we if you can become part of a cow share or a milk share, or you know a farmer local to you, please reach out to them because it changed our life when we started sourcing these foods locally. Our health went to a whole nother level. Plus it's gonna help out the community and it's gonna pretty much save the world, guys. It's one of the only things that we got left to save this world. Mm -hmm. Big business farming has taken over. Mm -hmm. We're trying to reverse that and really introduce regenerative agriculture, look up that. Many people think it's more expensive when you go to a local farm or you're part of a cow share, but it's actually cheaper in my opinion because we get, for instance, cheese is uh, uh, gonna be one of our protein and fat sources, but the cheese we get, we get a five pound block of cheese for $31, $5 a pound. You can't really beat that. I get a, I know I get, I think eight, might, might be actually 16 ounces of cheese at Whole Foods for, I want to say eight bucks, sometimes yeah, upwards of nine bucks. It's crazy. You can't survive off that. You're gonna so go you're going to, yeah, you're going it, to, it's just, you can buy in bulk in these things. Like today we, we made a broth, bone broth and gelatin, just made a whole pot of it and we froze four mason jars full. So we can just make it for the next few weeks and it's something you don't have to worry about. You just heat it up and go. You know, a lot of these foods are real fast food and that's where we'll get into the proteins. Go ahead, Nick. Number yep. one with eggs. So protein, eggs, really big fan. Obviously it's gonna have your choline, a lot of B vitamins, A, A D, E, K, very important. K2, MK7, very important. Uh, so eggs, really the best, most nutritious eggs are gonna be your duck eggs, your quail eggs. A little bit more expensive, a little bit more rare. You're definitely not gonna really find them in the grocery store unless you wanna pay an arm and a leg for that, which is a waste. Mm -hmm. But at least uh, get some chicken eggs. Those are good too, obviously, but make sure they're pasture raised. That The problem with a lot of these words is that they're bastardized and pasture raised is one of them too because pasture should mean that the chicken's outside eating the grubs, eating the ground, not the chicken feed, but sometimes that's not always the case. If you open up your egg flaps, you can actually see that sometimes they will enrich it 
with canola oil feed during the colder months. That's a bunch of BS. Don't buy into that crap. Try to avoid that completely. Do your best to get locally sourced eggs. That's going to be always the best. Changed my life because I was eating eggs um, from grocery stores and it was okay, but once I made the transition, just like all these other foods from a farm, big difference. Next one's going to be gelatin, bone broth, your collagen, uh, gummy bears. Those are pretty much all the same of anti-inflammatory amino acids, like you mentioned earlier, glycine, hydropoxy, or hydro, hydroxyproline, hydroxyproline, yeah. beta alanine. Yeah, so collagen protein powder would be a good one. Um, there's, once again, that has to be grass-fed, preferably. Uh, some good brands, I think Vital Protein. Crucial 4 is better, Crucial I think. Four is Crucial 4 is a good company. Yeah. Going back to the eggs real quick. Yes, like Nick said, look, take a look at the, on the uh, ingredient label and just look at the saturated fat and then you'll see the polyunsaturated fat. Or you'll see saturated fat as 10 grams and then you'll see the total fat content maybe as 14. Mm -hmm. So that means you got four grams of what? Poop it's up. not saturated fat, it's gonna be polyunsaturated fat. So try to get the, the closest total fat content to saturated fat content the same. The farther gap you're gonna have, the more of a risk you're taking. That's with a lot of foods too. Same thing with your chocolates. Yep. You'll find that as well. We got any grass-fed, red meat, wild game, deer, venison, bison, elk, moose, uh, cow, of course, any ruminant animal, goat, sheep. Ground beef. Try, try, again, prefer to get grass-fed, pasture-raised, local. You gotta do the best that you can. Again, it's always about optimizing from where you are at in your journey of continuing to optimize your life. Mm -hmm. Red meat, of course, we always recommend having red meat with gelatin, so like a cup of, cup of bone broth with some red meat to balance out the anti-inflammatory amino acids to inflammatory amino acids. Number four, we got organ meats. This can be, and I know a lot of you are probably like, oh my gosh, I cannot do organ meats. <laughs> I was the same. Me too. I was in your shoes. I didn't realize it. I never ate it my whole life. My parents never fed it to me. And uh, anything from liver, grass-fed kidneys, tongue, brain, I know that was crazy, but any really grass-fed organ meat sourced locally, again, sourcing is gonna be key here. You can make pâtés out of it. We have recipes on our Instagram page. We're working on a, a recipe guide as well mm -hmm. for you all, but making a pâté with organ meats is a great way uh, to make it more palatable. But this is gonna be your number one source of nutrients by far. It's gonna contain your most bioavailable form of vitamin A. It's got vitamin K, it's got vitamin E. It's gonna have bioavailable copper more than any other food out here. It's one nutrient that is lacking in 99% of people out there is bioavailable copper. That's very important. We always recommend a few ounces per week. Um, depending on where you're at, your body will, will tell you, listen to your body if you think you need some. And you know when you don't need any more, just listen. Your, your body will probably tell you, but most people are deficient, so again, we're all gonna need it. Start with the liver. If you can't really get fresh liver or you just really can just do the taste or it just grosses you out. At least get the desiccated liver. There you it's go. really not comparable, but it's better than nothing, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but we also recommend, you know, like, we, like you said, organ meats like heart are really effective. But not only that, but the glandulars, especially if you're someone who has hypothyroidism, like most people do, where you're really struggling with your weight loss, maybe try a glandular, thyroid glandular. Yeah. They've actually shown it to be just as effective as th Synthroid, which is a synthetic thyroid supplement. So that's always a good idea. Is adrenal glandulars, if you have low energy, thyroid glandular, add that in. Then we got grass-fed dairy. This, uh, this one changed my life. This is what started my journey back to animal foods and really showed me that I was in a constant state of stress and fatigue and inflammation. And so what I started with was grass-fed raw goat milk. And I really highly recommend, if you, can, if you like the taste, which I do, start with goat milk, raw goat milk, goat cheese, feta cheese, preferably raw, but at least get the grass-fed and ease your way back into it. A lot of people don't have the lactase enzyme, so it's very hard to digest dairy, but at least if you start with the raw dairy, it already has lactase enzymes and plus all the bioavailable minerals and vitamins, which are very heat sensitive. If you can't get raw dairy, at least start with that pasteurized, which is 140 degree temperatures, so most of the enzymes are still intact. Mm -hmm. The main thing is you just don't want I highly recommend avoiding dairy that is grain fed. Some people say it's okay. I disagree completely. Once again, these animals are fed moldy grains, terrible conditions. The animals just completely stressed. Why would you want that in your body? 
another thing with dairy, this, this accounts for any grass-fed yogurt, cream, cottage cheese, cheese, milk. You have five different sources of protein that you can incorporate into your day mm -hmm. as far as a protein. Going back to combining carbs and protein and hitting your minimum requirements of protein. Dairy is a very, very important anti-stressful protein. Again, calcium is demonized, but you cannot utilize calcium if you're not getting in the right sources of calcium. And a calcium pill is not gonna fix your calcium uh, depletion issues. Now, most calcium pills out there are calcium carbonate. It's 100 times larger than the calcium that's found in dairy, which means it's 100 times larger than the cell, which means you're not gonna absorb it. It's inorganic minerals, just hard rocks. That's why this is so important, it's bioavailable calcium. Another thing, I know we're talking a lot about dairy, but it is very important. Why we want to avoid all these nuts, seeds, legumes, muscle meats, they're high in phosphate or phosphorus. Most people's diets that we work with are too high in phosphate and too low in calcium. And when phosphate is high, you have an elevation of your PTH, your parathyroid hormone. When that gets elevated, you have synonymous with every disease out there, inflammation, aging, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, whatever disease you want to call it, they are all synonymous with elevated phosphate and low calcium. So getting in more good sourcing of calcium is going to allow that ratio to become more imbalanced and it's going to create less stress on your system. Number six, wild caught shellfish, oysters, shrimp, crab, lobsters, mussels, clams. Again, wild caught, local, as fresh as possible. Stick away from the farm ways, farm raised stuff. It's just, it, you're just, you're just really just rolling dice with your health. Um, we always recommend at least a half dozen oysters per week or a half pound to a pound of shellfish per week. That's also another great source of bioavailable copper. It's going to be your best source of zinc and selenium as well. Yeah, and so we were talking about liver earlier, right? Organ meats. So if you guys really do not want the liver, get the desiccated liver at least. Mm -hmm. Oysters would be a liver replacement. It's not as good as liver, but it's, I think it's got a lot of zinc, like you said, copper. It's going to do the job. Number seven, you got wild caught, low fat white fish, cod, haddock. You got orange roughy. Those are our, our top choices. Again, these are low fat. You can find a lot of these when you go out to eat. This is a great source, better than like most people are eating, like we talked about before, salmon or chicken or pork. Let's try to avoid those muscle meats. You're gonna feel even better when you get these anti-inflammatory amino acids into your nutritional habits because right now, most people again, are not getting in enough anti-stressful protein and they're getting in too much stress-causing protein. So that is it for our nutrition. You got your top carbs, fats, and proteins. You need to focus on these. And once again, if you're trying to lose weight, don't worry about this category. It's, it's good to know, yep. look at it, but these two things, you'll get plenty of fat yep. from the protein. Carbs and protein, keep it simple. 